Letter from John S. Smith to Juliana Reynolds, Camp near Harrison's Landing, Virginia, July 22, 1862. Mrs. Juliana Reynolds, my dear sister, yours of the 14th inst is at hand, and I will now try to write a few lines in reply. I must necessarily be short as I have not time to write a long letter. I am now engaged in the hospital, and I am kept so busy that I do not get sufficient rest. There is about 80 in the hospital, and four of us has to attend to them so you can judge I have not much time to spare. I have more to attend to than the other nurses I have the powders dealt out every morning. However I like my new situation and I am now better contented. It is the place I have wanting ever since I came here. It is harder than my old business but I will get better wages besides I will learn a great deal about treating the sick. My health is improving and I think I will soon get pretty stout again. You speak of sending a letter to me soon after after you received Tilton's and sending a copy of his, I did not get it. This last one is all I have received from you since you got Tilton's letter and I never heard what Tilton wrote. In my last to Susan I asked her to let me know what he had written but it is not time for an answer yet. D Dr. Crawford got the letter this morning stating the death of his child and he takes it very hard. I don't think he has eat anything since and he lies in bed nearly all the time. It is very discouraging to think about this war as we see no prospects of peace very soon and I fear but little of saving the Union. You may call me a secessionist, but I had rather see the Union divided than to see the dreadful calamities produced by this war. It is heart-rending to think of the misery and distress occasioned by it. We thought the Battle of Bull Run a dreadful battle but our loss there was small to what it has been in the late battles before Richmond. If we ever conquer the South it will be at the expense of an enormous sacrifice of life yet. The Southern people are aroused to the highest pitch of indignation towards the North. They are arduous, brave and determined and to fight a nation as strong as the South is with such feelings it seems to me to be useless. They are on their own ground in their own climate and we have to go into a climate which we cannot endure as the experience of this summer's campaign will plainly show. If our whole army is in as poor a condition as our regiment, it is of very little account taking off the sick and wounded in our regiment and there is but few left for duty. This climate does not appear to agree with northern men but notwithstanding the difficulties that are in the way we may in the course of time conquer the south but it cannot be done in haste. Their army at present outnumbers ours as nearly the whole white male population that are capable of bearing arms are in the army but the north may in time wear out the south as it is in a manner shut out from the world and cannot hold out as long as the north but by taking time other nations may interfere and the Union lost still, so everything taken into consideration I have but little hope that the Union will be preserved. But perhaps I am not writing to suit you as you may have different views of it. I hope when you write to me you will write more encouraging than I have to you. But I have written more already that I thought I should when I commenced, and still I have not written all I would like to write. I remain your affectionate brother, J. S. Smith.